looking at this area here where there were two retail buildings totaling about fifteen thousand four hundred square feet for what was approved and we're talking about instead building one uh, seven thousand four hundred square foot auto zone auto parts store uh, for the sewer flow calculation we have uh, 84 gallons per day <coughs> How did you come up with that calculation? Uh, two gallons per day per parking space times 42 parking spaces. Two gallons per day it's per parking space? Yep. And that's based on the... Uh, and how many parking spaces did you say? 42. This this is, zoning ordinance. This is the wastewater flow for um, Metcalf and Eddy that we need to use for the state. So, excuse me, question, the number of spaces is based on zoning ordinance? The number of spaces is based on auto zones needs. Um, let's see the zoning ordinance. Zoning ordinance requires 37 spaces. Auto zone feels they need 42 to handle their, their peak traffic times. Okay. Uh, so what we've done, the um, previous design had a, a gravity sewer line tied into a manhole down here. Uh, Rite Aid has its own pump station, ties in somewhere else. Uh, neighbor works has an easement here. They have a two inch force main from their pump station that comes across this way into that manhole that we're proposing to tie into. So at this point, we're proposing a profile that looks something like this. Um, you know, we haven't initiated full design on it at this point. We wanted to kind of make sure that the old approach was still acceptable to the sewer commission. Uh, but we'd basically be installing a manhole here that both the auto zone lot and whatever the future building winds up being can, can tie into that manhole and then go gravity you know, pretty much as it was designed uh, down to that manhole. We'd be looking at an eight inch, uh, an eight inch line here and then auto zone also uses an eight inch line to their building. Um, so really our, our purpose for being here tonight is just to make sure that that approach and the flow that we've calculated for auto zone are both acceptable to the commission and then we'll wrap up our design and get it into Mike Yergo. There's an existing eight inch line there now? Uh, mm -hmm. leaving, leaving this manhole, yeah. going into the street is an eight inch line. Okay. Um, coming into this manhole presently is the two inch force main from NeighborWorks. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'd be looking at constructing an eight inch gravity line more or less parallel to the neighbor works one and tying into the same manhole and rebuilding the invert. Well actually that's it. actually for number one the, uh, the treatment units are not designed by number of pocket spaces they're designed by New Hampshire septic designers standards so what you should have to do is for a dry good retail store is you have to take the square footage under the septic New Hampshire standards for septic design. So what I did is I did that, and it's actually equal to one treatment unit for the square footage of the building. Well, how many gallons did you come up versus how many gallons he came up? Well, it's done, uh, it's done by the square footage. So whatever that septic design standard is, I don't have it in front of me, so I can't tell you how many gallons per square foot it is. How many, how many square feet is a building? 7,000 somewhat, I think. Seven, I think it's 7,000. 318, like I believe. Yeah, right. and they're still finalizing the footprint. <clears throat> it should be around 7,400 square feet. So it'd be 74 divided yeah, by 7,400 yeah. divided by 100 times 15. I'm not saying that. I, not even. I don't think it's 100 gallons per square feet. It's 50, I think I came up to 386 gallons. I think it's 15 gallons for 100 square feet. Right. So I think I came up with like 386, 7, 387. So that 
well. Well, guess just uh, redo the flow calculations based on the uh, state subsurface design standards. I'm sure you're familiar with that chart. And uh, one treatment unit, 750 gallons. 450. 450. I just have one question um, in the learning curve. If you have a two-inch main that's going into the manhole and you add another eight-inch main into the manhole and the only line that you have going out is an eight-inch line from the manhole to the main line, it can accommodate the ten well, inches? Well, the two-inch is a force main. It's a force main. Okay. Which the two inch, what's on their private property right now is two two-inch force mains. Yeah, there is no eight-inch. There's no eight-inch gravity on their property at all. Okay. The only thing is eight-inch gravity is from their man on the sidewalk across the street to the main itself. And Kathy, you can't equate force mains with, gravity? with free flow gravity sewer. Okay. So I would say that they system would probably be designed to have a two-inch force main from their building. Um, what I'm going to suggest to TF Moran, and there's a meeting tomorrow on it, is that they it's got to a point now where this site has four parcels on it and they're all getting piecemeal together so i'm trying to clean up clean up some of the easements that the saw main is probably not even on the easement so that it needs to be cleared up as well because wherever the contractor put it doesn't mean it's actually where the easement actually sits there, there are i know there was a document recorded mm -hmm. It basically gave permission for them to leave the sewer force main where it was. But if you show, if you go to the subdivision plan itself, which there's a which is a there's a separate plan, mm -hmm. it shows where the easements are, but it's actually all the utilities on that easement. I mean, if things getting full of easements. Right. It was basically starting to happen, yeah. and I like to see how they going to connect the little parcel. That has not been developed yet. Uh, how is that going to hook up to the source it's, system itself? Uh, this manhole is on the other parcel that hasn't been developed yet. So that manhole is not installed. What's that? That manhole doesn't exist. Right. This is the one that, that we're proposing. Right. Part of AutoZone. So AutoZone will build eight-inch gravity from so the you, at the sidewalk into the parcel. So what you're saying is they're going to go rip through rip the park, through the, existing park that's there today. Yes, they're going to really put it. Existing now plan. we don't know if the actual eight inch and the two four inches that's in there now are going to be enough room between them all to fit into that manhole structurally. Get into this manhole. So we're coming into the side of it, you know, so a different a different uh, area. Because the, the plan I got is a plan that shows a two inch force main and a two inch uh, valve into that proposed manhole. So that means that you. But the plan that I have, you're constructing a force main from the building, from the um, proposed building. At the, at the, I think the plan that you're, that you're looking at didn't have a, a completed sewer design on it. No, we're still didn't. trying to figure out you know, exactly how we were going to approach it. Uh, what we'd like to do is to construct an 8-inch gravity line more or less parallel to the two force mains that are there, uh, to a manhole just on the other side of the internal roadway. Uh, that manhole would be for use by both AutoZone and the other parcel to tie into that manhole and go gravity through the park. If you're going to do that, why don't you eliminate the other force main and tie it into that manhole and cut their force main short? We can look at that. We can look at that. That's what I mean. I, I think the whole picture is going to be looked at, not just each segment anymore. Well, the whole reason we installed the two force mains was so there would be no digging in the park. That's right. why we did it at the, the same right. time. Yeah. I think, I think what... In retrospect, what would have been a good idea was to install this manhole at that time and put uh, put the gravity line there and have NeighborWorks end at that manhole and have these two guys be able to tie into that manhole as well. And that what was That's what was shown on, on the original design that was approved, but that's different than what was built. Um, so at this point, you know, we're trying to go back to correct what was built. You know, it's going to involve saw cutting the road. It's going to involve... Um, 
you know, cutting through some of that grassed area of the park, uh, replacing a piece of sidewalk where we cut through there, um, and then uh, you know, kind of working with those force mains that are there. You know, we're going to be running parallel to them. Is that manhole that you're talking of? Is that on the subdivided property that you're subdividing from? Um, is that the, manhole the on on Otto's own property? The new manholes are within the utility easement that's already there. So we'd be installing two manholes and, I don't know, I'd say roughly 150, 200 feet of 8-inch PVC within the easement that's already there for the benefit of all the lots. So any, any user in that complex can use that easement for their utilities. Well, you got, it looks like you had a lot of issues to yeah. work out with the highway department anyway as far as the street opening permit and whatever you need for the sidewalk and so on and so forth. So The street opening permit shouldn't come into play because the manhole we're tying into is on private property. Okay, when you talked about cutting the road, you were talking about a private road? Our road, yeah. Okay. Within our easement. Well, I'm listening to Mike Ergo, and he's got some concerns about, you know, going through the park and whether or not we can do the two force mains. So I really would like to, to come back again in March, and, and I, I mean, I don't have any problem, I think, with the flow, but I, I think I would, I'd like you to sit down and, and see if we can get the best solution to the problems that are on the table right well, the, now. The completed design does have to be reviewed by Mike Geargo before it goes to the state. That will not go to the state. What's that? That won't go to the state. He's putting a manhole in. Because putting it's a, they consider, the state of Amsterdam DS has in the past considered a service line. I thought the rule was if you put a, once you put a manhole in, it required state approval. Or They're if both you ways. Enter an existing manhole. It's been both ways. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shaws, when we did Shaws, they could well, stay. Okay. But. Instead of having him come back, I'm not sure he has to have him back. So why don't we just give him like a conditional approval? He's got to work everything out with the highway department. If he can't work it out with the highway department or make them happy, and if he wants to, then he can come back. And I would suggest check with DES to make sure there's no, no need to modify anything. That's all right. I mean, I know we've got the flow. Issue. I just see some, <laughs> some real questions that need to be, you know, resolved. It's on the table. We have the flow. It's what is the best design for the, the sewage um, system to be on that property. Hold by memory. And the manhole you want to tie into is not that deep. Right. You're right. It's not. And the profile we had here... Um, you know, it shows a couple of spots where we require some insulation. Uh, we have three to four feet of cover where it passes under the road that we had approved prior with insulation. So we're looking at something very similar to this design that was approved before. And basically, you know, we just kind of want to make sure that that's acceptable. How long acceptable. of a run are you going? Uh, the total to, uh, from this manhole to, to the new manhole would be in the neighborhood of about 300 feet. And, and the other parcel that, they're, that you're talking about, that you're splitting off from, what was supposed to have gone there before? Uh, 5,600 square foot retail building. Okay, now, doing the projected assumption, if that building went in there, would that manhole and that line cover the flow from that building and AutoZone at the same time yes. where it's it's a short manhole? Yep, the, uh, the pipe size uh, that crosses the park mm -hmm. is the same size of pipe that leaves this manhole and goes out into the street. We're matching the size. Well, why don't you make a motion for a conditional approval subject to review by the highway department? I think that's the easiest way to... Yeah, I make a motion that, that we approve the, the flow and the concept. Um, I make it. I make a motion that we we approve the the flow with the condition of the infrastructure development being approved by DPW and the state of New Hampshire. Okay, he's gonna. We're gonna look into the thing with this state. There seems to be a little conflict. So if he, if right. he, if uh, Mike finds out you need the discharge permit, you have to do that too. If necessary, with state of New Hampshire, if necessary. Okay. All right. 
if required. I guess. Okay. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't like to see them tear up that park. Who actually owns the park? Hmm. They do. Who? The park. Uh, part of the park will be owned by AutoZone. Part of the park will be owned by the other development here. A little bit of the park is owned by Rite Aid, but it's all part of a condominium, so they all, all the properties pay in to maintain the park for plowing, you know, gardening. Landscaping. This is really metamorphosized into something. I mean, we started out with a mixed-use development yeah, here. A, but that's and, a planning board issue. And now I, exactly. I understand that, yeah. but it's it's really metamorphosized. Yeah, it is. Are you coming to the meeting tomorrow with DBW? Uh, I know Jeff is. I might be as well. I'm not sure. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, <clears throat> request for email address. Message on quarterly invoices. I, um, I don't know if you thought that was okay to put that on invoices going forward somewhere on the invoice. That if just put the email address on the on the bill. If if the user would like to furnish their email address to oh, us, okay, I see. That's I see. what I'm asking. If if they would like to do that, in case in the future we could do something electronic, either with the invoice or I'm just trying to get more email addresses from from users if they would like to furnish it. So I just okay. was asking for your. So on the bill, it's going to say, "Would you like to forward us your email address?" You're going to start like a data bank so to speak yes yeah just to kind of have i have a few now because i've they've been in touch with our office through the website it's just is that something that would be just our information and not for the whole town correct so we would keep that yes that would okay. just be just, just okay. the sewer commission's information Okay, that's as fine. long as I, as long as that's what we're going to do, I, I don't have a problem. Do you want a motion on that one? Yeah, yeah. I make a motion that we can request um, customers' email addresses uh, to be furnished to the sewer commission office um, on the quarterly invoices. Okay, second. All in favor? Aye. Restaurants adding decking, sewer accessibility fee and treatment units. Did somebody asked for that, or what's happening is that North Garden is, is putting in a, a big, a huge deck, and in the site plan they call for 40 seats and two employees for that deck, which is a seasonal deck. Um, there's two other restaurants in town which have smaller situations. And I'm trying to feel what you guys want to do with the, the amount of seating there is. Because if you take the seating and you start adding accessibility fees and month and the quarterly fees, it's going to add up to a substantial amount of money. Well, how many months of the, is the deck going to be open? Well, I don't know how many months they're actually going to have it open yet. It's in the planning board stage right now. As many months as the weather will permit. Oh, <laughs> oh that's, well, I mean, you know, made off. Well, I would, I would think that would be the North Garden or any restaurant's responsibility to notify us when the deck is closed if they want to have a credit on their bill. Well, the thing is, it's forty seats. It's twenty-five thousand dollars with accessibility fee for a deck and the seating, plus the plus that's f what four treatment units. Well, I'd say if it was, uh, you know, if if it's open six months out of the year, that's. Uh, 40 half seats, nine months would be 43 right, quarter seats, you know what I mean? But we, we don't do that with anybody else, and it's coming to a point where, it's coming to a point where uh, it's an economy that stores are coming and going quickly, and with the source accessibility fees, change of use, permitting fees, that hasn't been happening. You know, trying to get a handle on that and straighten that out. When are they going before the planning board? Uh, I think they're going to have first one's going to be Thursday night. Have you had any discussions with them at all about this, or no? I haven't had any discussions with anybody about it. So there's going to be increased flows into the system. Somebody ought to be paying for that, right? 
Right now we are. <laughs> yeah, but you get two establishments, a uh, smaller scale, it's the same idea. No? Well, one's got like maybe four or five seats, and what's the other one got? Which ones are you talking about? The one up over here on High Street, oh, uh, and the other one across the street. Well, I, I, you've again, got to be assessed I think fairly you know, and evenly. Again, I mean, if if the whatever it is for forty seats, we charge them monthly, and then if they're because closed for weather because we had a blizzard or whatever, then they well, you got to they got to pay the entrance fee, which has to be yeah. based on a on a how do you. You don't know what the entrance fee is, if the, unless it's been open for a couple of years, depending on the weather. So you, you know, almost have to, have to start with some kind of an estimate. Which the estimate we, I took off is off the planning, uh, site plan that's going to go to the planning board. Yeah, but estimate, <clears throat> estimated seats or estimated when they were going to be open? Estimated seats. Because they have to do that for the number of parking places they need to provide for the establishment. And also, yeah. with a lot of a lot of restaurants, I noticed that we done in the past or however it happened, uh, they don't take in consideration the number of employees because employees have a, a gallons per day as well. How come we don't do do or maybe we do? Do we take into consideration the square footage of the deck as we use the square footage of a building to calculate the TUs? If you look at New Hampshire standard septic design standards, it's all broken down. And each thing is different. Restaurants done by seating. There's also a restaurant. There's a lounge broke down, takeout breakdown, and that's all. It's all determined. Yeah, but it doesn't differentiate between interior seating and exterior seating. No, it don't. Yeah, it's lounge and restaurant. I mean, it's all wastewater. Right. It's got to be treated. Somebody's got to pay for right. it. Right. Absolutely. And if the establishment doesn't pay for it, then the taxpayers of Gosstown have to pay for the it. The user fee pays for yeah, it. Yeah, right. 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 Pays for and that's right. not right. Well, I would look at it as if it was whether it's outdoors or whatever. Look at it as, as like Carla says, as, as it, it's a floor in a, of a restaurant that has seats and and well, go the accordingly. Deck, the deck across the street never closes. Huh? Yeah. Inclement weather or not? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Some people shovel. Well, I don't know if you want to send a, sitting outside. If that's oh, a I case just... where you want to send a letter to them, stating that you're going to build this deck. X amount of dollars is going to be owed to the commission. Because what's well, why don't you send a, why don't you send them a letter or are you going to the planning board meeting Thursday I night? I don't go to planning boards. Someone go from Megan. 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 Well, somehow somebody you know somebody should put them on notice that there's going to be some sort of a sewer fee. Well, or, you can have Ellen write a letter too. Okay, well, okay. Ellen can write the letter, put them on notice that there's going to be some sort of an accessibility fee due to the increased seating. And we haven't determined that amount yet because the plan, you know, they don't have the planning board approval. And then I, th I think to be fair, and you know, Carlos has mentioned two or three times, you got to treat everybody fair and equal. Why don't we look at all three restaurants and see what's going on with the other two and come up with some kind of global solution for all three of them so that one's not getting treated a little different than the other one? Yeah. No, it should be all equal. What? It should be all squared away. And Treat yeah, so I mean, if we have to do something with the other two, then so be you it. know, so be it. But it doesn't seem fair, seem fair to you know go after one and and not well, not, you know, to right. treat one different from the other two. Does that make sense to everybody? It does. It does. I think that's good. So, first of all, we'll see if the planning board approves it, because otherwise, if for any reason they didn't, then. Well, well, she I, might. I think she, you're going to send them a letter anyway, just because yeah. maybe that fee would be enough to make them say, "Well, right. maybe that's not worth it." They should yeah. be aware of it. Yeah. yeah. And this Before is, they sink a lot of money in the planning. Well, how, how did how did it come come to be that you know about it just from opening? Because I do the reviews for the planning board with Megan, and that's how I come across all the stuff. Okay. And I go to the TIC meeting, so a lot of stuff is going back and forth between the departments. I catch wind of it. So they have an engineer or anything, or just a builder, or who? who no, they got an engineer. They got well. They're getting. They're doing is they getting a lot line adjustment, because apparently they put a gravel parking lot. They bought old man. They bought got Gothier's on the Laurier Street side. They bought his property, and she made a by buying that property. She moved the fence. She moved everything, and she put a gravel parking lot. And I think she got bagged by the planning board. It's not having a site plan. Right. Well, if they're adding parking, they must be adding other yep. things. 
That's why I had a site plan said, I'm going to put a deck out to accommodate this 20, 40 sparking places. Yeah. You know? So that's how that happened. Okay, well, let's do that. Look at all three of them. Get back to us in March. And write the letter. Right, and Ellen will write the letter. Do you want it signed by the commission, or do you want Mike to sign it? Uh, uh, better off the commission, the commission will sign it. Okay. Okay, reaffirming abatement of five dollars and under prior to Barrington letters. How that's, many do you have? That's me. It's just the general um, over the years we've just abated anything under five dollars before the Barrington letters go out. And Evelyn, I think, for the sake of the audit and just wanted the commission in the minutes to reaffirm the fact that yes, we will abate um, anything under five dollars. Do you know how many we're talking about? No, I mean now it's it's twelve dollars. It's like seven people or something like that. It's a very minor amount. Um, it's not the amount so much as it's just to continue to okay. do it that way in well, January. I agree. You should continue to to uh, continue the abatement of five dollars and under. For my education, yeah. what's a Barrington letter? Mm -hmm. That, that's the very first letter that goes out to anyone that owes anything from the previous year, whether it's tax or sewer. A letter says that Except if you do not pay... It's your warning goes. Right. Yeah. It's the yeah. first warning. Um, I'm just curious about the name. But <laughs> I don't know why it's set by statute? It was probably a Barrington case originally. Yeah, but it's, okay. It, it's always <laughs> yeah, it's set by statute? Letter. Yeah, it's the yeah. first step okay. in a tax lien, property tax or sewer tax, and the sewer tax and the property tax fall the same thing yep. when it goes to collection and okay. liens and so on and so forth. And it lists... So there's a history. Of, I can Google it and figure out what that is. Yeah. <laughs> Came from Barrington, New Hampshire. Know. Ellen's no. last name is Barrington. What's that? Yeah. Ellen's last name is Vermont. Her maiden name. <laughs> What's her pen name? Uh, I'll have to use that. All right. Good. Oh, good. I okay, we have a letter here from the schools. Uh, That's actually from the Honeywell fellow. This doesn't look like this is anything that's uh, critical to deciding tonight. And this is, no. I think it's going to take a little thinking on our part. And also, I'd like Jim to see this. So why don't we just uh, table this, table this till the next meeting? Because I think what's happening is I think there's some dropping enrollment in some of the schools because you don't have the subdivisions coming in anymore. And the yeah. kids are getting older. So now they transfer from this school to that school. So they're seeing a drop. So I think they want to readjust it all. Right, in spite of the cool schools claiming that well, they, they need more room. Yeah, we have the, the other, yeah, the other well, thing so is, is this is a very timely because there's a big, huge uh, amendment that people will be voting on again. at the school side. So this is really the cart before the horse. I so I, I, this, this, this is going to wait till April as far as I'm concerned. Well, That's even though the student population has gone down, I believe that the... Uh, you know the people that work there. That I don't think that's gone down. It seems like you know. Yeah, the building capacity. Well, it's the same issue. It was like restaurant employees. Nobody's right. taking into consideration employees yeah. anymore, which which they need to need to do that. And the same thing I'm sure with the schools. The number of students there, yeah, X amount, three million units, and not taking custodian or employees there. All right, so we'll just let's wait till after the we'll election. Set that aside. After we vote and see whether or not. Okay, the uh, auditors have been on site. Is it, uh, that's going okay? Oh, yeah. yeah they, they came um, and picked up a lot of uh, information ahead of time, but now they're here this week. I noticed a couple of things, but I can talk to you about it another time. Okay. Okay, and the CMOM report, that's an annual thing. I brought it with me tonight. And you guys are working on that? Yeah, Mike and I will be working. We thought about it. Let's put it that way. What's, what's, <laughs> what's on the agenda? Are you, are you reporting what you what transpired last year is done, or are you reporting on what we're going to do this year? It's usually a year after. I mean, year before. Year before. So it'll be two, whatever happened in 2012 gets in a report. And any adjustments in inventory or flow? Usually provide a rain graph, flow graph, and an inventory. Do you, do you think at the next meeting we can go over the CMOM and see what we've done in correlation to what we projected getting done, what has been done, and what we're planning on doing this year? Yeah, if you want. I think that would be a nice thing to do. 
before July, you said? No, I said next month. Do you want to set a different date for the March meeting? Because, you know, a month from tonight is town meeting, and so people will be voting till 7 o'clock. We don't normally meet the night of town meeting, so do you want to? We want to look at something. Well, just gonna well, why don't we wait a week or two? Maybe we won't even have a March meeting, you know? Okay. Uh, we'll see if anything comes in. If nothing comes in, uh, you know, for the North Garden, if that, you know, if that they need a definite decision by then, we can, that'd be one thing we'd have to talk about. But, you know, like I said before, I'm not a big fan of calling a meeting just to right, call just a meeting. You can have it in North Garden. Pardon? A meeting in North Garden. <laughs> You know, All right. Take out the right dimensions. Yeah. Old business, Mass Road sewer construction engineering contract. This, we're going to wait for Jim on that one too. Did we pay that bill to <clears throat> Hoyle Tanner? Uh, that we there hasn't been a. Is there anything to... open and due Hoyle Tanner right now? No, I don't have anything. No, Mike's actually got a refund, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. I thought there was a, a request for a, for another extra for the engineering. There's an amendment in place. Okay, so amendment in place is that that has that been paid or that that hasn't been that hasn't been paid, has it? We're paid current. The amendment is just to address that. So the contract was never amended previously. He didn't want to do that, <clears throat> so we waited till the end. So you've already gotten the money, and now what you're asking for is just to um, to, uh, to formalize the amendment, the form, change order, so to speak, just so everything yeah. lines and up with this. If it was just for our purposes, I wouldn't care, but it's for the SRF loan. So in order to officially take advantage of the ARA money, you have to have that signed amendment, which will have to be approved by DES. Okay, well, I don't, I don't see any reason of putting that off. I was under the impression that uh, this was something new. I, I didn't realize that uh, it had already been paid. And so no additional costs or impacts to... Correct. Gosh, Tom. Correct. So you submitted the bills for payment before you submitted the amendment? We were told to do that, yes. Oh, and who told you to do that? We did. Huh? You did. Excuse me? The commission did, yes. We were asked to keep working on the project, and then the amendment would be finalized at the end of the project. That's the way you wanted to do it. Because we brought this up probably back in know, August or September, I think. Somewhere around there. Okay. You want to make a motion to approve the amendment? I make a motion to approve the amendment. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that's it. I mean, we are zero, 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 zero. Mm -hmm. There will be no more amendments. One more invoice no left, but that's part of that amendment. So, so no more costs. Yeah, we haven't billed that. The last invoice that is what I'm saying. It's for January. What did we do in January? There was some closeout work, paperwork. I just up with the state for the loan and that sort of thing? Yeah. Like a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> it's about $1,800. Pardon? $1,800 is the $1,800. More than 100 bucks. <laughs> All right. We have anything else tonight? Well, I'd like to see if there's anything in the future that just happens to pop up for any billings for February, anything that um, we get the amendment before we get, we uh, get the bill. Well, like I said, this was presented at prior uh -huh. meetings, and yep. that's, that's the way the commission wanted to, to handle this one. And the problem with that is you're going to be, well, I mean, at least the, the job's over, but if we did do it that way, would be amending the contract like every two weeks, every time you send us something, would it would have to keep amending it instead of just one big amendment at the end, correct? Okay. Yeah, if there was extra cost, yeah. So instead of one, one big change order, there would have been 
multiple little chains. Possibly. Or Possibly. Yeah. We try not to do that. 1800 here and 1800 there. So, uh. I have one question. And I, I think I misinterpreted something on CIP, but I just wanted to bring it up for clarification because I wasn't always here. But under public service, public works, line 82, I believe it was, that I found it. I think it was just a comment. Um, line 81, 312-2004 for F350 with plow, and in parentheses after it says sewer, which I'm assuming is the truck that you <coughs> have, mm -hmm. and it's approved $53,000. The comment is sewer commission funded 100% of the current vehicle. It's one I drive now. This, that was the replacement truck for the one right so what they're, they're just referencing so that's why there wasn't a line item yes, before for it because well, we funded it 100 percent the budget committee said if it's park sewer why aren't they funding it and carl explained that you guys funded the first one okay so that's just saying that yeah. dpw is paying the fifty three thousand. but it was cut out of the budget anyway the fifth i took this offline this morning well i was under the impression it was well, it may not be up it to date. Make, Obviously. It didn't make the budget. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, you're not Which vehicle it? is it? It's My pickup truck. Yeah. It has 90,947 miles. It's 100 and something thousand miles on it now. Those Fords, they're Ford F50s. They're good trucks. Yeah. Do well, Michael. They keep go, They keep on moving. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess we'll have a... Motion to adjourn, if unless anyone else has got something, then we're going to go into executive session for a couple of minutes. Um, just one other thing I, I'll bring up. Um, I'm Ellen and I had a discussion about public service of New Hampshire, and we're thinking that it might be to the benefit of the Sewer Commission to look at the ENH programs that um, are offered. Um, through public service being the entity, and then you can pick the supplier, and we could save considerable amount of money if we change our supplier to um, one of them. Um, I personally have done it. I know Ellen said she's personally done it. I've done it. And uh, Collis has done it, and it saves you quite a bit of money, and it's a saving. So I think it would be something that, that as, because we do pay public service, you know, it can well three hundred well, five hundred dollars a month. Is so. the town as a whole looked into doing that? That I don't know. I don't believe so. No. But we are billed separately. Mm -hmm. The sewer commission is billed separately for the our public service bills. Our bills are, have right nothing to do. Yeah, yeah, there's paying it today. They, they we have nothing to do with the town billing by public service. We only have. It's worth looking into. Yeah. How about question. the service? I mean. Service stays. It's the same. still public service. It's, they're it's the generator. Your, they generate the power. power who who supplies it? The lines. They'll still do the repair work. They'll still do the billing work and everything. But we have the right way. to decide who supplies. My question is, what happens when the uh, public service everybody switches over? What happens with their stuff? You're still paying them on your bill. Yeah, you sure are. Yeah, I know <laughs> delivery, but they've got all those plants that are making power. What are they going to do with theirs? Just sell it to lines. somebody else. Use their lines to carry someone else's power. The major factor in a lot of the change is that public service has contracted with coal, coal um, industry and their old contracts, their, their costly contracts. And that's where their supply side is from. The newer sides are going with the more green energy side. They're going with... Um, I think propane ga gas, um, I forget what the other ones that they're talking about. So that's what the major difference is and what the cost savings is, is because of the difference of what public service gets their supply from and where these other companies get their supplies from. And based upon the fact that now we have a choice, it, there's a considerable savings that these, I feel the sewer commission and the users would save on a year on a monthly basis um, with the billing and I I I think it's something we should look into and and if we need to bring it up at another meeting to substantiate what the savings would be we can do it and see if it's yeah. worth it 
And maybe calls could find out what the town's doing as a sure. whole. You know, it seems like uh, it seems like they'd be looking into it. Yeah, because okay. technically, actually, the town does own it. I mean, does. And there's no. another thing that they're doing that I don't know how they consider a town, but I know with um, corporations, they're not. It hasn't gone residential yet, but it's with corporations. They're allowed to now schedule when they are going to use electricity. So with large manufacturing firms, if there's uh, there's electricity that that they're just that has been billed the same unit cost for 24 hours. Now what they're allowing corporations to do is they're, they're billing like phone bills are billed. After hours, it's a less rate for electricity than during the 9 to 5. So I don't know if a town falls into the corporate area, but that's another fine-tuning part of it that, that corporations are allowed to now schedule costly electrical use products into off-hours that that public service is charging it at a less rate. So um, there's a couple of things there that are going on. With yeah, I'll, look, I'll look into that. It may be only, it's only for residential users, but who knows? I don't know the details of it. But I mean, how, many light, how many lights the town has when hanging on the street? A few. <laughs> yep. Okay, motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn, yes. Okay, we need a motion to go into executive session. I make a motion to go into executive session. The RS, maybe you actually don't need one. You right. just need right. to adjourn. Attorney. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I make yeah. a motion to adjourn at 10 of 7. Second. Aye. Aye. Okay. Is this thing shut off?